Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. Today we are going to discuss about what are the hypersonic missiles. We are going to also discuss that why this particular kind of missiles has been in use from past few days. And we are also going to discuss that what are the main advantages and features of this particular type of missile. So first of all, if we try to understand the context in which we are discussing today's topic is because the Russian Defense Ministry has actually announced that on the last Sunday, it has used for the first time in a conventional warfare, a hypersonic missile. And if we look at that arena where it has been used, so obviously since Russia is having a war, a conflict in Ukraine, and it's for the first time that Russia has this particular, used this particular kind of hypersonic missile in this Russia-Ukraine war. This missile not only has been used for the first time in the conventional warfare, in Ukraine, but in the history of wars, if you look at on the earth or uh, among the countries, it is for the first time the missile has been used in the uh, with the aim of intending damage or causing damage to a particular target. Before that, whatever hypersonic missiles have been used by countries like China and Russia, it has been only used for the purpose of testing it. As per the Ministry of Defense report from Russia, it is believed the missile system that has been named as Kinjal, Kinjal Aviation Missile System, it has actually destroyed a large underground warehouse that used to contain missile and aviation ammunition to help Ukrainian military. So let us try to understand that what are the hypersonic missiles, how they are different from the conventional or general missiles. So the first difference comes in the context of the speed at which the hypersonic missiles can move through. Generally, hypersonic missiles always have a speed that is equal to or greater than Mach 5. So what is Mach 5? Mach 5 basically is a term that is used in the aviation to refer the speed of any object with respect to the speed of sound. So the speed of sound that is 330 meters per second that is considered as Mach 1. That means Mach 5 is any object that is moving at speed 5 times higher than the speed of sound. So any hypersonic missile to be categorized as hypersonic missile need to have the capacity or ability to travel at higher than or equal to Mach 5. Second difference as compared to conventional missiles, this hypersonic missile have that they do not follow the ballistic trajectory. Ballistic trajectory, if we try to understand from this particular picture here, that you can see a trajectory that once shot out or once ejected out from the launcher, the missile actually follows a kind of parabolic path under the influence of gravitational forces as well as the force that is given due to the kinetic energy from the missile launcher. So when missile is launched from this particular point A, after traveling to certain distance in the upward direction, it will start to curve back, take a parabolic trajectory, bridge, come back again in the atmosphere and here the missile will land or strike the target. This kind of path is called as ballistic path. However, hypersonic missiles do not follow a ballistic path. They can be maneuvered to an intended target by producing a different different kind of thrust that is present in this missile systems. That means that is how this missile becomes much more accurate because ballistic missile once you target and once you throw uh, once you eject that missile out launch this missile the missile will not have any longer any control over the uh, direction or the speed of the missiles. It will just directly move as per the gravitational forces. However, the hypersonic missiles can be maneuvered and can be have a much more precise strike to strike and damage the intended target. So these are the three major differences between the hypersonic missiles and the conventional missiles. Now hypersonic missiles are also not of a single type but can be further divided into two different types. The first type that has been tested by the Chinese military or Chinese army is something that is referred as hypersonic glide vehicle. This glide vehicle, why it is called as glide vehicle? Because the movement path or movement pattern of such missile system look like as it is gliding like a parachute and after gliding to certain distance then finally it is a strike or it strikes the intended target. The other important point about hypersonic glide vehicle is that it cannot be launched by aircraft or fighter jet, it has to be necessarily launched by a rocket. If we try to look at this diagram of Chinese test of missile hypersonic glide vehicles, we can see this is the rocket launcher. From rocket launcher, when missile is launched, it first takes a upper part, or takes a kind of vertical path, 
then after traveling to certain distance the missile ejects out and then we can see from here it re-enters back taking a parabola parabolic course however it does not directly fall back in the ground surface vertically down it kind of start to move or glide in the atmosphere in kind of uh, we can say horizontal directions so this kind of movement this path of movement of this uh, missile is called as glide uh, glide movement and thus it is called as hypersonic glide vehicle the other kind of hypersonic missile which we have is something that is referred as hypersonic cruise missiles now cruise missiles have a capacity that uh, actually have this uh, ability that they can travel to a much uh, accurate path can travel to a different different courses in their path and that is why they cannot be launched from a rocket but they had to be launched by a very powerful engine something that is called as a scramjack that is kind of air breathing high speed engine why it is called as air breathing high speed engine because the engine that works there it takes up the air from the atmosphere then compresses the air and due to and after that sometime it eject, ejects the air out so due to this compression and ejection of air the missiles or any vehicle or any such object move at very very fast speed so such kind of system or such kind of uh, we can say mechanism is called as a scramjet mechanism or air breathing high speed engine mechanism that is the second type of hypersonic missiles so obviously the question comes that what are the advantages of using hypersonic missiles so the first advantage is that it is much more responsive in nature in compare uh, in com as compared to the ballistic missile and it also has a long range strike options against such target which are located at very farther distance or such target which are heavily defended by the army or military personnel or even uh, we can say anti aircraft systems and such target which are time critical in nature time critical in nature means suppose some battalions of groups or uh, battalions of soldiers are there or we have some uh, this uh, battalion tactical groups are there or we have a group of tanks that is moving around certain areas and you want to strike you want to strike these regions if you want to strike these targets which are continuously mobile then they you have to use a hypersonic missile to be more accurate in nature and especially this the use of hypersonic missile becomes much more important in those cases where other forces for example for a strike ground strike forces are not available or the target is located in such areas where it is not physically possible to access those regions so in that cases uh, hypersonic missiles are preferred apart from that the other advantages as per the congressional research survey of united states congress it says that the hypersonic missile could challenge detection and due to their ability to move at low altitude due to their very high speed and due to their maneuverability it makes it very very difficult for any anti aircraft system or anti uh, missile defense system to track the missiles and before the missile defense system could track the missile the hypersonic missile will already would have hit the target that is why em like for example if we try to understand from the ukrainian cases the problem is that if hypersonic missile is being fired by russia the uh, people will not have sufficient time to switch on the air raid system air raid alert system and people will not get sufficient time to go and hide somewhere in the bunker to save themselves from the missile that is why the response time becomes very very less very critical and very less if you want to save the citizens or you want to save the target from the hypersonic missiles so these are two main advantages why hypersonic missile trumps over the conventional warheads or conventional missiles so obviously we have discussed that russia has become the first country to launch hypersonic missile in a conventional warfare which other countries do have such kind of missile system so apart from russia we have china and usa which are in the very advanced stage of development of hypersonic missile system if we try to understand the russia's capability of hypersonic missile the russian hypersonic missile can travel at a maximum speed of mach 10 mach 10 means 10 times the velocity of the sound while the range of the hypersonic missile can be as high as 1200 miles especially when it is launched from a fighter jet or fighter aircraft such as mig 31 at the same time russia is also trying to integrate the hypersonic missile system into its sukhoi uh, aircraft as well as the uh, other uh, second aircraft also apart from that if you took look at the such countries which are in the initial stage or the beginning stage of development of hypersonic missile we have five countries including india we have france germany japan and australia which are working to develop indigenous indigenous hypersonic missile system so now let us try to understand about what are the india's hypersonic missile development program 
So the main characteristic or main feature of India's hypersonic missile development program is that it is going to be indigenous in nature. Indigenous in nature means all parts and components of missile as well as the whole uh, uh, we can say assembly of the missile will take place in the India itself by the scientists of DRD. Second, the hypersonic missile which India intends to develop will be dual capable. Dual capable means that the missile will be able to carry conventional warhead as well as the nuclear warhead. That is what it means to be dual capable missile. If you look at the progress that India has achieved in this particular arena, you can see that India actually has successfully tested a Max 6 scram scramjet few months back. Max 6 scramjet means the scramjet can produce a speed of up to six times the velocity of the sound and it has been successfully tested. Apart from that, for the uh, on the pilot scale for development of pilot level project or pilot scale, we have 12 hypersonic wind tunnel in which up to Mach 13 speed can be achieved and the testing can be done to address or to understand that how capable our missile defense system will be or our hypersonic missile system will be. That is all about hypersonic missile system and why it was currently in use, its important features, characteristics and advantages we have discussed. That is all for today. Thank you very much.